Joanna Simpson here at Risk Mines International in Barcelona. Joining me now is Trevor Adams, Chief Risk Officer at Ned Bank Group. Thank you very much for joining me today. You're welcome. And just tell me, how does it feel to be here at Risk Mines International? Absolutely fantastic. Uh, I've uh, come to this event for about 20 years in a row uh, until obviously COVID. So I've missed it a lot. Uh, last two years, I couldn't make it last year. So I'm delighted to be back and there's nothing like an in-person event. Totally agree. And what is it you're looking forward to most? Well, I think we continue to live in very interesting times with, with lots of ongoing shock events uh, and risk events going on in the world. So I think it's good just to, just to listen to others and, and, and share thoughts and insights. Uh, and there's lots of new emerging risks or emerged risks. Um, as opposed to the more traditional risks that we've spent a lot of time on in the past at, at Risk Mines. So just good to, to get other people's perspectives. And just to pick up on that point slightly, given the volatility of the last couple of years and particularly the past eight months, how well prepared were banks for these crises? And what have we learned? Well, I, I think the banks were, were very well prepared. I mean, we, you're never quite sure. Every crisis seems to be a different one. Uh, I don't think we an, quite anticipated the COVID pandemic, um, but I think generally we're well prepared. And, and I think, you know, that was certainly on the back of the global financial crisis where clearly the banks were not well prepared and it, it was a disaster, but there was a massive re response. Uh, I kind of refer to the regulatory tsunami that, that followed that, but it was, it was necessary. And I think the banks embraced it, Basel III and, and everything else. Uh, and I think that has really stood us in, in good stead for this next big crisis, which I like to refer to as the great lockdown crisis, um, which obviously you know, had a massive you know, economic, health, social uh, impact and, 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 and crisis. Um, but I think we came through it very well. So, you know, credit risk as always, you know, banks are, are sort of macroeconomic hedge funds. So they, they're so impacted by what happens in the economy. So credit risk was always going to be massively impacted, but I think was not nearly as bad as many forecast at the, at the start of the crisis in, in, in 2020. Um, and, and capital and liquidity levels were absolutely fine and adequate, which I think was very important to see and in fact uh, you know Ned Bank and, and all the South African banks sort of sitting today and in the last year or so at capital ratios above their through the cycle target ranges higher than they were at the start of the crisis so so I, I, I do think it indicates we've learned an enormous amount since the global financial crisis we've put it into practice and we've demonstrated our our ability to be highly resilient and I think overall, I, I use the term resilience brilliance. I think generally across the banking industry, the banks came through it very well, which I think speaks to them having been well prepared and learned the lessons from the, from the global financial crisis. And going forward, what are some of the major financial risks that should be on CRO's radars right now? And how can you build resilience to mitigate properly against those? Yeah, so I think I mean, it's interesting to get a question on the financial risks because these days everyone talks about the non-financial risks because obviously a lot of these big new emerged or emerging risks are, are the non-financial risks. So it's good to kind of reflect back on the financial risks, which I always sort of refer to as the, the traditional risks of banking. I mean, that's the essence of what banks are about, capital liquidity, market risk um, uh, and, and, and credit risk. Um, so they're always going to be, all of them, on, on your radar. But, but I think the one that does stand out now, because I do think, as I've said, you know, capital liquidity, I think, has proven to, to be really, really solid, will be credit risk. And, of course, now, you know, new, new event amongst, you know, following the war, the war is the inflation risk, obviously, in, in the U.S. And, and parts of Europe, inflation levels at 40-year highs. Uh, you know, that translates obviously into, you know, rising interest rates, which impacts credit risk, which again, as I said earlier, <laughs> banks are macroeconomic hedge funds. So um, it just has a direct impact onto credit risk and credit risks, the essence of what banks do, they provide credit. So 
so I think that certainly for me is, is most top of mind. Uh, you know, we've worked on credit for so long. We've been through Basel II on the advanced approach for credit. We've had IFRS 9, in, certainly in South Africa and, and across Europe, which we've implemented. But, but I still think um, there's, there's a lot more we, we need to do. As I say, managing credit risk now, going through this, this inflation uh, issue that, that we're dealing with. But, but I do think that we, we tend to be quite backward looking in our, our credit risk management. Um, uh, obviously, all the modeling we do is, is very much premised on historical data. And I think we've got to get better at being more forward looking in credit. Uh, you know, there is the term ACPM, active credit portfolio management, that, that's been around for many years. I, I think there's a step up, you know, we can do in being somewhat more dynamic, more forward looking in credit and how we influence the strategy of the bank and therefore what happens to the credit portfolio, the book, the mix, um, and the quality of, of what we allow uh, onto our balance sheet, uh, you know, beyond the, the capital and the, and, and the impairment models, which we kind of tend to spend a disproportionate amount of time relative to origination models and pricing models. So, so maybe be spending more time on what we let, let in the front door as opposed to modeling what we've already let in and it's a fait, a, a fait accompli. Um, linked to that, I think like many banks um, you know, are busy with kind of target operating model reviews on the back of radical digitization and technology transformation programs and, and certainly we are um, in its driving that in the risk space, including credit. So I think you know, to do active credit portfolio management better, we have to leverage rolling out advanced risk analytics, digitization, um, and, and certainly we having a good look now at our risk IT and data infrastructure. Data is always the big challenge, although as we know with radar and, and so much focus on data over a number of years, but there's still a lot to do around the quality and availability of, of data, which then enables you to do advanced analytics uh, and, and so forth to take your credit risk intelligence to, to a heightened level. So, so that's very much where I'm focused right now, in a good space on credit, but there's another level still to take it to. So lots of areas to be working on then. Trevor Adams, thank you very much for your time. You're very welcome. Thank you.